What's going on traders? It's Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital. I just finished recording this whole video and realized that I was not connected to my audio. Um, so I'm gonna record this video for the rest of it with my dunce cap on. Um, let's go through the whole thing. I was actually flowing really nicely in this video, thought I really delivered the content, but let's go through, we'll run it back. Please click the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content. I will continue to make it for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about the carnage in the markets. Um, I know a lot of people were decimated today, so if you were really you know, hurting your portfolio, that is something you know, I never wish that upon anybody. Um, really tough to deal with. Um, we're gonna go through all the information we usually do. We'll talk about my trades for the day. We'll wrap up their order flow, all that good stuff. Before we jump in, quick first disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. And last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account to any one of my trades. <laughs> All right, let's jump in here. I took a bunch of caffeine. I actually took my pre-workout because um, I was just about to either go to the gym or go for a run. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to do both. We'll see. But um, yeah, so I'm just super hyped up. We're just going to jump right in. All right, so markets today. Again, um, today... You know, I had to eat humble pie maybe two or three trading days ago. Um, I stopped out a bunch of trades and I'm glad that I did because today I was able to come in with a nice fresh perspective, good mindset, um, and really tackle this day the best that I could using the information that I have at hand. Um, so really what happened today and what's the setup moving forward in my opinion? So we had this inflation number that <laughs> was on the horizon Everyone has been super worried about inflation. It's like, oh my gosh, higher yields. Oh my gosh, the Fed's buying too many bonds. Oh my gosh, gas prices are going insane. Colonial pipeline hack, uh, lumber prices, all these different things. So we have these fears that are swirling around. Inflation data comes out and it's actually much higher than expected. And the issue with this is, this is an entirely different macro setup than we've ever had in the past decade and even longer than that. I have never experienced in my career an inflationary setup like this. And really the only people that have are people that were trading in maybe like the 70s when we had that huge inflation scare. So unless you're like senior, senior, like you're like 60 year old trader, whatever, 70 year old trader, I don't even know. Um, you know, this is uncharted territory for a lot of us. So that's why for me, it's like, I'm gonna treat it as such. I'm gonna respect these market conditions and just try to flow like water here. So S&P 500, we got that report. And really the issue is every single time we have any sort of hiccup in the markets over the past decade, the solution has always been, okay, the Fed's gonna add more stimulus. They're gonna buy more bonds. They're gonna reduce interest rates. And that always makes things better. And it really bails us out of these deleveraging events. Now the real problem is the issue is the Federal Reserve policy. It's leading to, among other things, there's supply shortages, what have you, but all this money printing is leading to higher inflation. So it's actually where like, um, what used to be the cure is now the disease, speaking about it in like COVID terms, but yeah, so they can't really do that. So at this point, if we enter into an inflationary cycle here, everyone that's long, you know, they're essentially trapped like rats. And I think that's what, you know, I referred to myself as trapped like a rat the other day. Um, but yeah, I think we had a situation today where everyone has to hit the sell button all at the same time. And we ended up getting a multi-standard deviation event. Um, now that I'm recording this a second time, you know, we have the luxury of seeing how futures opened. So this, you know, I'm going to act like this isn't even here. We're up 0.06% in the futures right now. But um, yeah, so what I see is, we dipped below this monthly value area. We broke through support. That 4,100 level is very significant. We have been holding that level ever since April. If you look at this chop, we've never pierced below it. Um, and now we finally have. We broke below this monthly value area low and we dipped all the way down to this 50 day moving average. And one thing that I will point out Sometimes it helps to zoom out to a weekly chart when we have these scenarios. You know, I talk about this, I go through this all the time in our member videos for Pristine Capital members um, on our weekend market analysis. So, you know, this is the weekly chart. We've been in a bullish trend ever since COVID 
uh, ever since the COVID crash, periodically we've had these pullbacks to the 20-week simple moving average. Those pullbacks, while they always feel scary, they always feel like the end of the world, those historically have been the ideal buying points in this up cycle. So you can see we got pretty extended from that 20-week moving average. Now we are actually getting a bit closer. But it would not surprise me if we end up dipping down to this, you know, 3950 level or closer to 4000. One thing I also want to address is, you know, crazy sell off, absolutely ridiculous. Um, but at this point, and you'll see this reflected in my trades for the day, we are very, very oversold. Um, so look at this. And I'm actually glad that we're getting this green candle. Oh my gosh. One sec. Um, so let's right here, I'm going to pull up my Finviz and I'm going to pull this up again. Uh, so we look at the SPY and then we put these Bollinger Bands on our chart. We're going to put this two standard deviation Bollinger Bands. We're also going to put on the three standard deviation. And then we're also going to put on the four. I have these up and ready for everyone, but I had shut off my computer when I saw this. Okay. So a two standard deviation move, you know, tagging that lower Bollinger Band, that's a pretty oversold market. You can see we tagged the four standard deviation mark on the S&P 500. So while that macro setup is in play, um, and I think this is really pr a precarious market, I think this is a market where you can really get hurt. And I think a lot of people experience that today. But at this point, you know, we're four standard deviations oversold. So that's why I decided to play a couple things for an oversold bounce. But um, we'll see what happens. If we look at our NASDAQ, absolutely ugly. And I'm racing through here because I, I want to make good time. So NASDAQ up 0.04% in the futures. This really got hammered. So box scores, you know, for the overall market, SPY was down 2.12%. We had the NASDAQ down 2.59%. We had the IWM down 3.25%. And we had the Dow Jones down 2.02%. Um, so all these really got hammered. Could we approach this uh, VPOC down here at 12857 on the NASDAQ? Absolutely. I would not be surprised if we tagged that um, within the next couple days. Russell, you can see ugly looking candle here. And the Russell has been one of these markets where we've been in a range since February. You know, we had the huge run off the November election. If we break below, which we pretty much did here, you know, this could lead to a powerful downside move. So this is one where, you know, if we get a bounce tomorrow, maybe I end up shorting, you know, the small caps. We'll have to see. What's going to happen, and I know this is going to happen for a fact. Um, a lot of people, you know, on Twitter, they're trying to call the bottom like every two seconds. It's very cringy, actually. Um, I saw a lot of it today. You know, I would definitely just say, I certainly don't know what's going to happen next in terms of this macro environment. If anybody's trying to tell you like they know, you know, try to, you know, just think for yourself or like avoid them like the plague, to be honest. Because these people that are trading like one lot futures and whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, I know right here. Like, eh, just be careful. Um, let's see. Because um, like I said, this is a really interesting macro backdrop. What is going to happen tomorrow is there's players that definitely stopped out, you know, all throughout today. Now we're going to get, you know, what looks like it could end up being an oversold bounce. There's going to be players that stopped out today, you know, uh, down here. When you get these multi-standard deviation events, you can have very powerful bounces. So like, for instance, um, where was this? During COVID, you know, we had a bunch of these where we just had these really strong bounces. That does not mean like, oh, we're resuming an uptrend or anything like that. So it's going to happen. There's going to be people that stopped out here. If we get a nice bounce day tomorrow and say we get up to like 40, 80, you know, then they'll buy all the way back in. So for me, it was like, I want to buy a little bit today, uh, see if I can take advantage of some sort of bounce and then take it from there. Maybe like reshort the market or whatever. Well, let's see what happens. But, um, yeah, digging a little bit deeper, breadth was absolutely dreadful today. You can see, you know, best breadth was the small caps with 14% advancers, but this is just, you know, horrible. Really was a liquidation. 
looking at this as well, this heat map, we are getting, you know, there's a lot of players out there getting absolutely liquidated. So what's really cool actually is if you can emerge from these sell-offs and you're like, okay, I didn't really take a big drawdown or, you know, I did okay, I protected my risk, protected my downside. There's lots of opportunities after these forced liquidations, but you just have to make sure you're not, you know, every 30 basis point move in the market, oh my gosh, was that the bottom? I'm buying, 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 buying. Like I saw so much of that today where every time the market bounced like 10 basis points, there were people saying, oh my gosh, I think we just bottomed. You know, it's very important, unless you're like a scalper or something, it's okay if you miss like, you know, even like the first green day. You know, if the market goes up like 1% tomorrow and you're not long, what's gonna happen? It's not the end of the world. Um, but what can happen is like, you know, you buy every single like 20 basis point uptick in a downtrend and like you can get, you know, really hurt. But what I'm seeing here is, everything's being sold indiscriminately. I've actually been doing a lot more fundamental work on companies lately because all these, you know, they're selling off huge now. For anybody that says like, oh, every company is just so overvalued in this market, I actually do think there's some good opportunities starting to present themselves. Um, and I think it's a big benefit to know like, okay, I actually know what I'm buying here. I know what the cash flows are and whatever. So I'm not gonna like panic if it goes down. Um, so yeah, I've been putting on my fundamental hat a little bit more lately, but yeah, huge, huge washout today. In terms of sectors, also a huge washout. Um, you can see retail was down almost 5%. We had the ARC funds down huge. Um, <laughs> we have this uh, 3D printing fund down big. I, I think the best performing sectors here, we had healthcare which was only down 0.94%. We had energy, was it, which was actually green. And then biotech only down 0.78%. In terms of style factor, same thing, blood across the screen. We have the momentum style factor down 3.08%. And we had the cyclicals down 3.15%. So pretty much everything that anyone is long, you know, just selling off. It's not like we're going for a specific style factor. It's just players going, I need to re reduce my exposure. Now for some of my trades for today. Let's pull these bad boys up. Okay. So coming into today, I had some pretty light exposure on. Um, but when I saw that we uh, you know, missed that inflation number, I was like, okay, I need to you know, be careful. Sono, this is a name I researched the night before. I looked at their earnings history, you know, what they reported last quarter. I saw they blew it out. So I took an earnings trade right off the open at 9.35 a.m. Uh, I got long these Sono 30 strike calls for $4.85. Um, and really what I noticed, I noticed the same pattern that I saw in Upstart as well. So Upstart, look at this. This is a, um, a credit platform. They, um, they have software as a service and they give that software to banks and the banks use their software to originate loans. So like it's a really cool business model. But last quarter, they actually shredded their quarter. Awesome guidance, awesome earnings. And you can see they had a really nice run here. But then as these growth stocks fell out of favor, this thing really just retraced all the gains. Upstart had a gap up like 20%. Of course, today it got you know, pretty much liquidated and rolled over. But I'm noticing this theme where companies that report good earnings and are super oversold, you can get a nice snapback reaction. So for Sono, I noticed, hey, this could be a very similar setup here for a huge sell-off. I bought these calls pretty much like towards the open. So I got them, you know, up here. We had a 9% sell-off, but Sono was the same thing. This is where they last reported earnings. They ripped and trended higher, but then, you know, with all this growth scare, growth sell-off, you know, they really suffered. Um, so I took that earnings trade, Sono, in the after hours. Check it out. It's a nice win here. So we are trading at $36.44. Let's go. They reported awesome earnings again. They are home speakers. So you know, everyone's been buying homes. Everyone has been moving for COVID. The home builders have been killing it. Sono is gonna benefit from that trend as well. And we saw that in their results today. So this one looking like it could be a nice winner 
Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I had the 30 strike calls and I paid like $4 and change for those. Um, so I put those on. I actually have another company that I'm looking at to do a similar trade for tomorrow. I got to do more research on it, but we'll see. I like these earnings trades when the companies are incredibly oversold. Um, I think there's some edge there. So that, I'm taking that into future earnings seasons. But um, yeah, so no, I closed out my crowd strike June 18th, 190 strike calls for a small winner here. Closed them out for 1525. I'd paid 1361. I just said I'm taking the base hit as I see VVIX is very elevated. This was important. So VVIX, when the trading session opened, VVIX opened like a huge gap higher. So I think this for context told you, hey, I'm not, I don't want to be adding risk here or like getting long. You know, I want to be conservative. So yeah, the VVIX, then look at what it did throughout the day. It ended up closing off the highs, but this was kind of like your tell of, you know, be careful here. See, I closed out my crowd strike for a small winner here. I closed out my Unity earnings trade for a small winner. Closed out for 510. I'd paid 445. This is on like the first 30 minutes of trade. I closed out the last third of my XLU calls at 1002. Um, closes out for 247. I'd paid 257. I took two targets on this one higher. So overall, this trade was a winner. Uh, I closed out my Lennar calendar spread. I had a call calendar spread on this one. I took one target higher. I believe it was at um, like 255. I closed the remainder of it out for 160. I'd paid 210. And I just said my focus on protecting capital in this environment. I would love to see the market reverse higher later today, but reducing exposure in case it doesn't. And it really ended up, you know, not throughout the day. I took some Q's puts at 1037. Um, and the Q's ended up, you know, just cascading lower. Um, then at the end of the day, I closed out my Q's puts for a small winner, closed them out for 1507. I had paid 1412. And then this is where it gets crazy. I bought some Roblox calls. Roblox is my largest equity position. I bought some calls as a way of playing for an oversold bounce tomorrow. Roblox, my favorite company in the marketplace right now. Love the fundamentals, love the management, love the story. And I love the price action at this point also. See, so yeah, I took these June 18th 75 strike calls for $5.67. Roblox is acting like a leader. Look at what this company did today. Market sold off big. We got a nice green candle. Granted, it closed down 2.73%. But what this is telling me, look at this volume. Players were taking advantage of this sell-off and they were adding to their Roblox. <laughs> so I'm expecting Roblox. I think in the next, you know, couple weeks, if the market turns around, you know, we'll see if it does. Not exactly expecting that, but if these growth names sort of stabilize and the market doesn't just like flop over, I think Roblox is going to break out of its IPO range. And I think every growth investor is going to be tweeting about this company, adding it to their watch list, saying they're long, pumping it. I think this has potential to be a meme stock because it's essentially like child video games. I think from every angle I look at this, I just like this stock. <laughs> so... Yeah, I added a little bit more to it. Um, so yeah, Roblox looked good. I also added some CrowdStrike, July 21st, 185 strike calls. The um, the same hackers that hacked the Colonial Pipeline, they hacked two other companies as well. And CrowdStrike, they're a leading company in cybersecurity. They have their SaaS model with their Falcon software. CrowdStrike is a name that held up very well during this sell-off. So this is a name as well. It's not like it's as strong as Roblox, but I think there's some players accumulating CrowdStrike down here. Look at these lower wicks. Come on. So <laughs> we'll see if CrowdStrike ends up moving or whatever. Yeah, I added some calls there. Um, yeah, so those are my two plays like to see if we get an oversold bounce. On the equity side, like on the common stock side, I closed out half of my ENGMF. The ticker is now actually EGLX for 722. I had paid 721 for this go. Originally, I bought this stock for like 486. 
Um, I closed it out, you know, at a higher price at some other point and reestablished the position for 721. Um, I just said in the morning, this was a 953, lightening up a bit in this uncertain environment. EGLX, it's a small cap stock. The liquidity is not the best. So I figured, hey, if the market takes a turn, this might not do very well. Um, so I just reduced that a little bit. Uh, I moved the stop up on, on my CrowdStrike common shares uh, to 191. Um, and then I stopped out of my CrowdStrike for 190.89. I had paid 190.19. And I just put you know risk management here. This was earlier in the trading day. Towards the end of the day, that's when I added those calls after it had sold off big. And then I added a stop for my Roblox at $71. I said my favorite company in the market right now, but might get a chance to buy back cheaper if the market goes off the rails here. It ended up not going, This the market went off the rails, but Roblox did not. So not only did I not get stopped out, but I added those calls that I had in the options channel. Um, taking a look at the options order flow, Let's pull that up right here really quick. Oh my gosh, is this video going to be longer than the other one I recorded? I thought it was, I thought I was going faster. Dang. But let's take a quick look. So, yeah, you can see overall pretty bearish flow. Today what I was seeing is a lot of capitulation puts going up. Um, so we had Tesla puts. Um, you can see SPY here, retail stocks. Um, and then what I noticed is players, when they were buying the dip, they were buying the dip or like, you know, just adding call exposure. A lot of them were going for these big blue chip names. Cause that makes sense to me. Like when the market's selling off big, most likely institutional players, they're not going to add exposure to like Joe Schmo growth stock with like a $200 million market cap and no liquidity. They're going to look for those liquid uh, leaders that are uh, systemically important, that like everyone buys them, you know, those sorts of things. The companies everyone knows and trusts. So you can see some of those going up. If we get a bounce, you know, I'll be looking for some of these names tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, you can see just throughout the day, a lot of capitulation puts. In the after hours, you can see all these IWM puts going up as well. So I definitely think there's some fear in the market heading into tomorrow. So we'll see if we get our oversold bounce. CNN fear and read index at a 37. So there is fear in the market. So let's see how things pan out tomorrow. Hope you all had a good trading day and I will see you all in our pre-market session.